All right, guys, I have just arrived at a job in Oxford. Um, it's been a pain in the butt of a drive over two and a half hours today for some reason. Usually it's better than that. I uh, just arrived here. It's an oil job, and as far as I'm aware, there's no hot water. Uh, so let's go have a look. Let's go see what's going on, and I'll take you with me. See you inside. All right, so I've arrived at the property. It was all quiet. Um, let me... If you listen carefully, it goes quiet now, okay? So I arrive, this is how I found everything. I press this boost, and if you're quiet, you should hear something come on. I hear something come on when I press that button. So the assumption is that stuff there is working, okay? Um, the boiler is outside, or the boiler is in a boiler room that's outside. So currently I've clicked that on, I hear something, so I'm assuming something's going on with the boiler and it's working. Um, and then come in here to the airing cupboard. It's uh, it's got a 28 mil valve on it. Okay, I haven't touched the valve, but the fact that I can hear the boiler run tells me that valve probably is open, and it is. The valve is open. And then I come up here and fill this top pipe, which is the flow. And it is cold. Now, what I notice here when I look at this system, if that's the expansion, I'm assuming that's the expansion coming off there and that is the cold feed coming in there. Now, if you ever see this type of pipe work, so let's have a look, yeah? Yeah, so the cold feed comes off there, expansion off there. And they come off the hot water primaries. So if you ever see that, that should be an instant indication that this is going to be a gravity hot water system. Hear a bit of gurgling there? Boiler sounds like it might be overheating actually. Yeah. Can you hear that? Let's go and have a wee look at the boiler. Now my head is telling me something here. Definitely sounds like it's overheating. I'm gonna turn the hot water off for a sec. Still overheating. A lot of overheating going on. I'm going to go and run the heating to cool that boiler down. So I can still hear it. That should cool it down. The pump should have kicked on now. And it has. We've cooled the boiler down. So let's go and have a look at the actual boiler. And then uh, if you're like me, you'll probably know where I'm going next. I just want to feel this. It might be blistering. Okay, that's absolutely scorching now. Oh, yeah. So my head's telling me if that was overheating like that, we need to check two things. We need to go up in the loft and check there's water in the tank. And we need to check the thermostats on the boiler. Surprised it hasn't uh, didn't lock out. All right, so here's the boiler room. First, in, first impressions, this is both of us, all of us. Okay, there we go. So that's the gravity feed to the hot water cylinder. And then there's the pump for the heating. And like I say, for me, I was able to tell that by the pipework layout. 
that's uh, crusty. That's cooled down. Even though this was overheating, that's cooled down because it's empty. I think we need to get some water in it, is what I think the actual problem is. I'll check the thermostat actually works on this Thermicon. Been getting hot, isn't it? Okay. Okay. It's all the way in. I am surprised that the ovary hasn't popped out. To be completely honest, there's no clicking on that at all. So the thermostat, I think, has failed. The overheat hasn't gone though. All right, let's go get some water in this. There's no water up here. The stats won't pick up any heat and it will just bang and crash. So, loft, check the tank. Ah, oh, there's our Ephony. Ephony's over there. That's hot. So as you notice, the, the tank is full of water. Okay, it's well above the level, which is there. Yeah, it's well above that outlet. The pipe, the expansion pipe there was warm. Okay. So because that's warm, I know that that's clear because it was expanding up into that when it's banging and crashing. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that outlet is clear. And to do that, I'll go and get the gallow gun from the van and I'll show you all how I use that gallow gun. Um, I've just got to move some insulation here so I can get closer to the tank because I'm quite far away leaning over. Okay, so the gallow gun should be in here. It's not in there. They're all, the, they're all the cartridges, by the way. Uh, so I hope it's in here. Otherwise, I have to try and find it in the van. It's definitely in the van. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's that in there. And always take a couple of cartridges. And fingers crossed that will get the job done for this lady. But these are all for testing multiple things at once. Let's get up there. So there's the gallow gun, okay? I'm gonna unscrew this. I need to pull that lever up. Unscrew this. I'm gonna take out the cartridge that's already in there. That's done with. And I simply drop in another cartridge, push it all the way down, and I put it in here and screw this up. You'll hear it go Okay. See that? So now I'm going to try and lean over and put it in here, in the hole in the tank. Yeah. And push that in there as tight as I can and pull the trigger. And if this works, well, actually, do you know what? We'll do it here. We'll do it here. So what we're going to do, we're going to spray it up the expansion, in, and we should then see water shoot out into that tank okay come on guys you gotta like and subscribe man so many of you watch these videos that are not subscribed it will help me out massively why i don't actually know but everyone always says it on videos so like and subscribe please thank you
spray it up the expansion in, and we should then see water shoot out into that tank, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna pull the trigger. And it's not. There we go. Just shot out into the tank. You see all that water going in the tank? I'll, I'll let the rest of the CO go in there. Now what's gonna happen, okay, is the tank should start filling. Whoa, okay. So, so it's still a lot of pressure. Hopefully that tank water starts to go down. And if it does, the tank should start to fill. And that means the heating system's filling. I can see that level's going down. Yeah, if I put a line in it here. Okay. There you go. That is what I use a gallo gun for. That's all the air pushing that water out. Yeah. Lots of steam. That water's very hot. And as you see, the ball valve is about to start filling. And that's what I use this for. That has just saved me hours of messing about. Get one. I'll put it in the link of the video. How simple is that? So I'll let that fill. And there you go. That is what I use a gallo gun for. That's how I use it. And hopefully, visually, you could see exactly what that does. And um, we are now dealing with a tank that is filling terribly, but still filling. We've now got a customer's heating or hot water back up and running. The boiler should not be overheating now. And maybe when we go back downstairs, the boiler stats will be working. Just get a bit of water in there as quick as I can. And the reason I bring two canisters up is sometimes they will airlock or mess about again. I'll just whack another one for it. Let's just say, worst case scenario, okay? Um, worst case scenario, that bottle of CO2 has cost me a fiver. Okay, I can't remember how much they cost. I think I worked it out to, you buy them in bolt about three quid each. So let's say worst case scenario, a fiver, um, but it saved me two hours. I mean, if you're someone on price, charging per hour, you might not want this, but for me, that's how I solve a block cold feed quickly. Let's go check it out downstairs now. All right, so part of the way, I'll know if this is done is, this should be boiler temperature now again, and it is now, it's absolutely scorching. And if you remember where I checked it next door, where it goes through the wall, it cooled down. So if we go out there and that pipe that, outside it does that, it snakes along the wall that way and goes to the other side of the boiler. If this pipe is uh, red hot, the other side of this wall, we know that that's now clear. Or, or the cold feed is now unblocked and that pipe's full of water which would have transferred the heat from the boiler into it. So it should be as hot as this one is here, which is a good 80 degrees probably. So let's go back to the boiler room. Okay, so here we are back. Okay. So if this pipe is now scorching, then we've done it. That, and it is, that pipe's now scorching. So hopefully now these files are hot. Ah, yeah, burning hot, can't touch it. Okay, so that's, that'll be why it was overheating. There was just no water where that file pocket goes. Yep, Jesus Christ, that's hot, yep. Okay, shouldn't have just grabbed that, that's... So make sure they're in fully and they are. And our thermostat is now clicking. It's clicking at around, ooh, 85 there, yeah? There you go. So whereas before it wasn't clicking at all because there was no water on the pockets and that thermostat only goes from 60 upwards. So the files were not in water so it wasn't picking up the fact that the, temp the boiler had been overheating. So now 
it clicks at 85 which means these are now hot because they're in water which means that bit's now going to work i'm going to now turn it all back on and uh see where we go from there all right so i do need to mention another couple of things um this property is a bungalow okay so that's how that airing cupboard with that hot water cylinder up in the air that's because it's a bungalow and it works on gravity so the hot water cylinder is the highest point on this system hence it would be the first thing to be starved of water so that's it really other than a quick visual inspection of some bits and bobs uh, putting covers back on stuff that should be this site fixed all right so i found this i've just had to re-watch my video it was on about 85 um don't need to be that high i'm gonna go about 77. so what would have happened to this system where it's set that high and the cold feed was blocked every time this ran a little bit of steam escaped into that loft and that's how the water level slowly went down and obviously things like that don't help either uh but i'll get this run oh by the way i've lifted that five out and put it up there as well let's uh turn it on okay so we put this back on all right so the boiler's now running no issues 